Hey guys, thanks for visiting my channel. This is Eric. Today we are going to be pulling the engine out of my Mustang. So sit back, relax, follow along, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Engine is out. There's the turbo. Frame rocker arms. This is the TTI single street kit. See, it's got a log side header, or a log header on the driver's side. Crossover pipe goes underneath the engine over to passenger side. Wastegate exits out. Just the, uh, just fence the passenger side. And on the passenger side, it uses a standard Mustang Shorty header, which is really nice. Uh, this particular header, I believe, is a JBA Shorty header. Three bar GT40s. And we'll go ahead and start tearing it down. One nice thing about these stage eight header bolts is they've got a Allen key. Allen key fits in the end of it. 
those hard to reach headers. And you see here, I used Orange RTV to seal up these headers uh, several years ago. Did a pretty decent job. Doesn't appear to have any leaks anywhere. Yeah, let's uh, look inside the headers. Sorry, header ports, exhaust ports. See some of the port work that was done. down there. Not sure if that was after the fact or if it happened while it was running. And over on this other side you can see the stage 8 locking header bolts. I've actually got the clips on these uh, since they were very very difficult to get to once the uh, turbo and downpipe were in place. I've got an e-clip that clips right onto the head of the bolt prevents it from uh, backing out. Actually there's a there's a locking clip that's behind the e-clip and uh, that locking clip keys into the bolt head and uh, keeps the header bolt from backing off and uh, causing his exhaust leak. These crossover bolts I don't know if you can you guys can see that, but uh, that is a what they call a stove bolt. It's a uh, deformed lock nut. It's a metal lock nut. There's no nylon in it, and uh, it's great for turbo headers. So it doesn't melt the nylon out. Doesn't come loose. Works fantastic. at the locking header setup, locking header bolt setup. There's the e-clip, the locking tab, and you can see the little groove on the bolt that the e-clip fits into. That never fails to happen. Eclip went flying. No idea where it went. Harper Freight Ratcheting Breaker Bar. Nice little piece.
guys, well that's it for today. Uh, let me go ahead and show you what uh, what the rest of it looks like here. Made some minor discoveries. Uh, kind of wondering if uh, you know they said 92 and 93 sometimes have cast pistons. Some people say 87 and 92 have forged pistons. So let's take a look and uh, you let me know. All right, so here's what I'm seeing. It looks like there's some casting marks down there on the back side of the piston. Now, the other set of pistons I've got from another motor, TRW, there's no casting marks there. And then in the front of the piston, there's the, there's the E7 part number. Now the pistons that are in my engine right now, there are no part numbers on it. These balancing pads, they have a little bit different machining marks on them and uh, they have a F0 uh, part number, meaning they, they were uh, 1990 part numbers. Whereas on these other ones, you see the back side is flat and they've got a D1 part number. You guys tell me what you think. Um, is this a cast piston engine? Uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, this engine is original to the car. I bought the car with 28,000 miles in uh, 1998. Uh, it was fully documented uh, for having 28,000 miles. So uh, as far as I'm aware, the engine is stock to this car. It's original to this car. So uh, that may clarify some things for you guys. Not all 1992 Mustangs have forged pistons. Let me know in the comments what you think.